So now we can start looking at how to find the potential energy difference between the anode and the cathode. So we have a list of reduction half reaction reduction potentials for the half reactions. Um, and you can't really measure an individual electric electrode potential. You can only measure the potential energy difference. And so what we do is we, we, we assign everybody the standard hydrogen electrode, which is kind of in the middle here. We have we run all these reactions with one side is a standard hydrogen electrode and the other side is anything else. And then whatever the voltmeter reads, we assign that to be the reduction half um, the reduction potential for that half reaction. So basically we're just saying the standard hydrogen electrode is going to have a zero potential energy. Sorry, zero reduction potential. So the other thing you get out of this table, and this is just a shortened version of a really long table. This will be in the appendix of the book, or you can just Google uh, this up here, standard reduction potentials, and you can see a much more complete table. Um, we can look at we can compare oxidizing and reducing agents. So on the top left, these guys up here with the really positive um, reduction potentials, these are good oxidizing agents. So these are good oxidizing agents, or strong oxidizers. Um, so remember what they do. They like to be they are if they're doing the oxidizing, that means they are themselves reduced. If you're being reduced, you're gaining electrons. If you remember. Um, Fluorine likes to gain an electron. Chlorine likes to gain an electron. Those things are the, the anions, they gain electrons. On the bottom here, you have things that are strong reducing agents. Reducing agents are down here. So these are things like lithium and sodium. They are things that like to undergo oxidation. Oxidation is losing electrons. Those guys give up an electron. So if you remember from Chem 1, we just pulled this periodic table, these guys like to uh, gain electrons over here, and the ones on the left like to lose electrons. Okay, so you can compare oxidizing and, and uh, reducing the strength of oxidizing and reducing agents there. This is one more electrode uh, potential you might want to add in there. Um, we're going to need that for one of the exercises that we do. So add in magnesium, and again, if you had a more complete table, that would be in there. So just to summarize again, standard hydrogen electrode has a potential of zero, and um, everything is based off of that standard hydrogen electrode. So these are the numbers that we're going to be using to compare the cathode and the anode. Um, you don't have to change the number, so when we plug it into this equation I'm going to show you down here, don't change the signs. If it's negative, keep it negative. If it's positive, keep it positive. So the cell potential can be found this way. Um, the E naught cell, that's the cell potential, is the, the reduction potential of the cathode minus the reduction potential of the anode. We're always using the reduction potential, so you don't have to try to flip the sign to make it an oxidation potential. We're always using the reduction. So cathode minus the anode. Um, when you look these up in the table, uh, when, you, when you take your reaction, you split up into half reactions, you're going to have a, a, an oxidation and a reduction reaction. In this table, you're only going to see uh, the reduction potential. So you're only going to see the so the oxidation one is not going to be in the table as it's written in your reaction. So you're just going to compare the species that, that that you're looking for. Even though the anode is going to be flipped, don't change the sign. You're just using the reduction potentials. Uh, so it doesn't really matter that it doesn't match exactly. So cathode minus anode always use the reduction potentials. And this is an intensive property. So potential energy per unit charge. This is an intensive property. It's independent of how much you have. So after you balance your reaction, you may have like a two in front of your zinc or something. Don't worry about that. That doesn't factor in anywhere here. Um, just pull out those numbers. Don't change them. Whatever's in the table, that's what you want to use. So you don't want to change that at all. Um, here's just one example you can look at. So we have our anode over here. We have our cathode over here. This is just the standard hydrogen electrode. Um, and so if you wanted to figure out what the cell potential would be, you can look up the so the anode over here. So we have zinc and zinc 2 plus. So you want to find that one in the table. So if you go back to the table, and I just zoomed in on this table, um, you can see here I have zinc and zinc 2 plus. This is the reduction potential, even though I'm looking, I, I have an oxidation in that reaction. That doesn't matter. Just look up whatever number that is. So I have I want I'm looking at for the reaction between zinc and zinc 2 plus. So it's negative 0.76. So this one, the E, oh, 
reduction potential of the anode was negative 0 0.76 and the E naught of the cathode is a standard hydrogen electrode so that's just going to be 0. So to find the E naught cell I want the cathode which is here 0 minus the anode which is negative 0.76 so that gives me a positive 0.76 volts for the cell potential difference. So even though this is an oxidation, one of these has to be an oxidation reaction. When you look that up in the table, just look up zinc and zinc 2 plus. So again, when I go back to that table, I'm just looking up, here we go, zinc and zinc, and zinc 2 plus. Just pull that number right out. I didn't change it at all. It is whatever it is. So let's do another example here. Um, we can take the cell diagram, remember how what the cell diagram really means. Um, this is the anode on the left, and we have the cathode on the right. Oxidation happens at the anode, and reduction happens at the cathode. You could just look those numbers up as they are, since you know that you're just going to do the E naught of the cathode minus the E naught of the anode. Those knots just mean you're under standard standard conditions, um, cathode minus anode. So if you want to look those up in the table, we already did zinc, right? We already looked zinc up before, and that was negative 0 0.76 volts. And if you wanted to look up the copper, copper two, copper to copper two, uh, we're over here, there's copper and copper two, so that's 0 0.34. So this is 0.34. So you just plug that into this equation. Cathode over here minus the anode. And you get 1.10 volts. So when you're adding and subtracting, you're looking at the number of decimal places. So I had two decimal places here, two decimal places there. So I'm gonna end up with two decimal places there. If you want practice writing out the reaction, which is never a bad idea, we can write out the reaction here. Since this is the oxidation half reaction, I know I want uh, zinc to zinc two plus. I'm going to lose electrons, that's oxidizing, gain electrons, that's gonna happen with the copper. And so I gain two and I lose two, so I end up with zinc solid copper 2 plus, zinc 2 plus, and copper solid. So they didn't ask for that in this problem, but I usually do ask you to do that. So, um, But the point is just knowing the uh, how to interpret the cell diagram here, this notation, the anodes on the left and the cathodes on the right, you can just figure out what the what the cell potential would be right, right from that, just looking up those species in the table, and this is how you would write the whole reaction. Um, in this problem, it's a little bit different. They're asking you to find this reduction potential. That's usually in the table. This is not on the table. This time they give you the E cell, right? And then you're trying to find the E naught of the um, of the anode, right? This is our anode because it's on the left, and this is our cathode. Um, we have another inert electrode there. Don't worry about that when you're writing out um, the reaction. Platinum doesn't matter. This solid iodine isn't uh, very stable to put a um, to, to build up a charge. That's all that it's saying there. So here I have my E naught cell is the E naught of the cathode minus the E naught of the anode. I can look these up. I can look up I minus and I two in the table. They should be in the table. I minus and I two. There's I minus. There's I two. So 0.54. It's my cell potential here of the cathode. Oops. 0 0.54 volts. And I'm trying to find the anode. So I can just plug this in. 3.21 is the naught of the cathode. That's 0 0.54 minus the E naught of the anode. So I can subtract this. Get 
careful with your signs or don't drop that negative sign. This becomes 2.67 volts, but that's negative the E, not of the anode. So I'm going to divide that by negative 1 and negative 1. So the E naught anode equals negative 2.67 volts. I guess we have time for one more. Um, same kind of problem. You want to figure out who's now, except instead of giving it to you in the cell diagram, you have to figure out um, the half reactions. So here you have I minus and I2. That's a good place to start. I minus and I2. So you want to balance this two electrons. And then, so obviously looking at that, you're losing electrons. This is oxidation. That's your anode. And so you can look up the E naught of the anode for this guy. And then the other half reaction is going to be whatever else is left over there. H2O. So balance everything other than hydrogens uh, and oxygens. That's all we have here. So then you're going to balance oxygens by adding water. And then balance hydrogens by adding your H plus. So you end up like that. And then you want to balance your charge. So we have four electrons. You are gaining electrons here. Um, so this is reduction. This is the cathode. So you can look up the E naught of the cathode in the table. So we're going to look up iodine first. Iodine 0.54. Here I have I2 and 2I minus is positive 0.54. 0 0.54 volts. And then for the water, you have four um, electrons, oxygen, and H plus. You could take a minute to find it. Here's 1.23. You have four H pluses, four electrons. Yep, this is the guy we want, 1.23. And since they do want us to balance the whole redox reaction, we want to make sure that we are uh, we are losing two electrons, we're gaining four electrons, multiply this guy by two, write this whole thing by two, so we end up with four I minus two I two and four electrons, and then we can add everything up. Um, our four electrons are going to cancel. We end up with four I minus O two, four H pluses. 2i2 and 2h2o. And then to figure out the potential, the E naught cell is just the cathode minus the anode. So 1.23 minus 0.54 gives us 0.69 volts. And that's, that's positive, so that is also a you know, spontaneous process. We'll get to that next section next.